What's up guys, my name's Dean, or as most of you know me, Twisty, and it's time to get to another season mode. We're in round 15 at the moment, uh, even though this is like round 14, technically. Uh, because next week, uh, we're actually gonna do something different, rather than a season mode video. I spoke about this a little bit last week because of the buy rounds, have kind of messed up the fixture a little bit, uh, and given that Richmond had their fixture in the buy, like a round earlier than it actually happened in the actual season, um, then that sort of messed this up a little bit. So next week's the last week of the actual buy rounds, uh, and then we're gonna do something different for that. But as for now, this is what we're gonna be doing, and uh, we actually are gonna be talking about buy rounds. So everything bounce underway. Uh, but let's let's get into buy rounds and and why we need them. Why are they? I don't know, I guess people might think they're a new thing, but they're not really. Um, so we've kind of always had at least one buy round over the number of years um, in the AFL, I remember. Uh, th there's still two this year, although technically there's only one. But uh, the way they work is you get a week off, basically. So how they used to do it was they used to do a split round, uh, five games one week, four games the next. Uh, basically would give the same thing as a buy. Or, or they do two split rounds or something. Something like that. Um, to get the... Actually, no, a split round would be a buy. Yeah, no, that's that's right. So then, um, yeah, obviously... Oh, actually, no, but it used to be four and four. Because of the way that there was only 16 teams back in the day. Uh, and then the Gold Coast came in, the buys were sort of messed up, like you'd have a buy randomly. And then late in the season, every team had a buy within like two or three weeks, something like that. Um, and then what we have now is we have these trio of sort of buy rounds in round 13, 14, 15. Uh, where six teams miss out in each week, and then I think it's round. Let me get it up here. Okay, so this season we've actually only had the one by round uh, between these three. So I think what they did last season was they had a split round as well at some stage throughout the season. So they had the buys earlier, like round 9, 10, 11, or, or something like that, and then like round 17 they had a... Oh, Hampton, that's terrible. They had, like, a split round, so then that broke the season up again into, like, two buys. But uh, what I think they've replaced that with this season is uh, the round 24 buy. So as soon as everyone's done with their home and away games, there's going to be a buy the week before finals, which, again, is going to mess up our, our gameplays here. And we're going to have to find something else to replace it with. But uh, I think it's gonna be a very it's it's a good thing like players kind of need the rest as you may notice over the coming weeks um, some teams perform better with the buy some teams perform worse the week after the buy I know Richmond are generally pretty crap the week after the buy so thank goodness we're playing Brisbane this week because um, I remember last year I think we played West Coast the week after the buy at home and it was a game we were probably expected to win and we just didn't do anything with it. Now, that, that was a terrible drop mark. But a beautiful goal. And what what people don't understand is you get wrecked after, you know, like 14 constant weeks. You know, people playing through injuries to this point. They need, you know, a week to get off. Um, gives players extra time to recover. So, uh, and it's sort of like, you know, everyone gets their, you know, holidays. Their school holidays. You get two weeks school holidays. These guys, like, this is their work, so they need, they need, like, a little bit of holidays, I feel, anyway. Um, and then, if we look at, like, the round 23 by, obviously, so teams can be primed going into the final series. I think that is the number one priority here, is it getting the teams ready to play finals. Um, because the last couple of years, Fremantle have rested players two two out of the last three years. I think they did it in, uh, or maybe two out of the last four. They did it in the, you know, they made the grand final, so 2013, and then again in last year. And North Melbourne as well rested like 
nine or ten players in the last round or something stupid that uh, the AFL were not happy with at all. And that this is sort of their response to that is, you know, all right, well, we'll give you a buy round. That's a magnificent kick. Uh, we'll give you a buy after round 23. Does it sort of make the season lose momentum is the problem here is, you know, is everyone going to sort of go, well, you know, my team's done. There's now a break between now and the finals. What am I going to do for this weekend? So the AFL are... Uh, trying to stack this middle weekend with a bunch of stuff. I'm sure that it will get better over future seasons. Obviously, this is only the first season that they've done this, this sort of by intermission between uh, round 23 and the finals. So uh, what have we got this year? I think we've got the EJ Witten game, which Channel 7 is now broadcasting, which I think is a little bit disappointing, um, considering Channel 9 has been doing it for so many years. Uh, then you've got the... There's going to be a women's game, I think, on that weekend, the final of the women's league, uh, which will be the Bulldogs versus Melbourne, uh, or something like that, which will sort of lead into the, the women's league next season, so that's going to be on there. Um, and I'm not actually sure what else is currently scheduled for that round 23 bye weekend. Um, hopefully, there's some cool stuff, you know, down at the MCG. Hopefully, they get a big turnout to the Women's women's League game. That'll make it interesting as well. So, um, there will definitely be some, you know, stuff over that weekend, but it won't be as sort of big as the first week of finals. But I guess that means, uh, for me, as a, as a Richmond supporter, if we do make the finals, I'm going to get at least two weeks of finals hype. <laughs> before we get eliminated. Um, hopefully we can pull off a miracle again this year and get there, but I don't see that happening. Um, yeah, so what do you guys think? What should they put in the round 23 by weekend? What should they you know, be doing throughout uh, you know, the current by weekend? So when there's only six games on, should there be anything special. I know we've got the Thursday night games, but they're actually happening over the next four to five weeks rather than just the one week of tonight. Or just, rather than just over the bye week. So, um, yeah. Let me know what you guys want to see happen over those bye rounds. And, uh, or, you know, how many bye rounds should there be? When should they happen? Or what we should be doing in the round 23 bye because I am definitely going to be hungry for footy, especially if my team is KO'd from the finals. I want to watch everything that I possibly can. So, you know, I might go down to the women's game, wherever that is, and uh, watch that. So, we will see how we go. And let's uh, beat this Melbourne team, because Melbourne are annoying. <laughs> oh, they played advantage. Actually, no, I'll take that back. Melbourne aren't annoying. They just beat us. Hence, they are annoying to me. Oh, Miles takes him on. Runs to the 50 and kicks. Oh, that was absolutely perfection. Somehow found Hampson. Oh, one of the funniest things was uh, last week against... Oh, it would have been two weeks ago now against the Cold Coast. I was watching the game back uh, when we won in the last quarter. Hampson takes a mark about 20 metres out directly in front. It was a great mark. And Dennis Cometti on commentary goes, this is no mere formality, believe me. And I just started pissing myself laughing. So I'm like, Sean Hampson, he's not known for his great goal-kicking ability. And uh, that's quite hilarious. I just thought it was funny. Who knows if anyone else thought it was funny. Uh, but I'll wait the game again this week against the Lions because um, we should get it done. Again, we should go then 6 and 7. Did he just kick the ball 50 metres backwards? Yes, he did. And he allowed young Daniel Rioli to just... Oh, Daniel, what is that? Damn, Daniel! Roberts Thompson. Does that come up as Roberts Thompson? Pedersen. Long kick. Okay. It's up in uh, Marbier. Mobier Chol subbed into the game for Dylan Grimes. Sort of might just give him a little bit of a wee little run here. I've lost Stone out of defence. Long ball, Lloyd at the back. Griffiths. Oh, gee whiz. Somehow got rid of that. 
in the back three to Melbourne. They're lucky to get out of that one. Very lucky. Tringo now. He's got it on the wing. I think he's disappeared into the stand. <laughs> he pretty much did disappear into the stand. And he kicked it along to Vandenberg, though. Oh, that's not a bad kick to Tyson, who could probably have got it and gone. And he goes long in the doors direction. Rance. Just couldn't have mark him there. I think that was a... I thought maybe Alex Rance, you know. Oh, my goodness. My goodness gracious me. Can I get one last goal? No. A two-goal win from a six-goal game. Quite, uh, quite a bizarre game, to be perfectly honest. I feel like we got out of jail a little bit, but... Whew. I'm behind each in the last quarter, my goodness. Oh, I've got the ladder up for you guys who want to see the ladder. Richmond are 14 games played, 12 wins and 2 draws, I believe. Does that make sense? 12 times 4 is 48. Plus 2 draws, yeah. And then we play the Gold Coast Suns. Oh, okay. Where's that one being played? Is it being played? No, it doesn't say. I know it's our home game, but like, alright. Well, let's have a look at the, the technical ladder here. We can see Richmond, 14 wins, no losses, two draws. If you want to see where your team actually is on the ladder, I will just scroll down now for you guys so you can have a look. So the top eight is Richmond, Sydney, North Melbourne, and Freo around at that top four. West Coast, Collingwood, Carlton, and the Western Bulldogs are the remainder of the top eight. Followed by Brisbane, very close. The Giants, very close. Geelong, St Kilda, Port Adelaide. Hawthorne, Gold Coast, Essendon, Melbourne, and the Adelaide Crows sitting on the bottom of the ladder. But everyone is still a mathematical chance of making that top eight right now. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, what should we do with buy rounds? Should they keep going? Should they not keep going? You decide, and I will see you guys later.